Greetings and welcome to the channel. If you are new, this is the House of David. And in the House of David, we have the truth. Today, we're going to talk about Christianity. And that is Christ insanity. Christians go crazy. Christians feel entitled to heaven. Okay. They just automatically assume they're going. You can tell a Christian about Moses and they don't give a damn about him. The only time they're going to go back to the law of Moses is to show you how Jesus is the Deuteronomy 18, 18 prophet to them. Now, we know there's no need to even go further into detail and explain that one because Moses and Jesus was nothing alike. The only prophet of history that can be compared remotely to Moses is the prophet Muhammad. Now, a Christian scholar by the name of James L. Dow is the one who tells us this in his Collins Jim Bible Dictionary. It's a must have. I have a copy. Now, the Bible says verbatim that God is not a man. A Christian, you know what he going to say or she going to say? They going to say, yes, he is with no solid scripture. OK, back in the day. They used to try to go by the word, okay? We used to want to have a scripture to validate whatever you're claiming. But nowadays in Christianity, you can just say whatever you want to say without no scripture backing. I heard one guy, he literally tell me, I don't have to show you no other scriptures. This scripture is in the Bible. He doesn't understand that in the mouth of two or three witnesses, Every word should be established. There should be no one scripture hanging out there that you build a mountain, a tower, a Sears tower on. I used to say, OK, you ain't supposed to be doing that. Every scripture is supposed to be in line with another scripture. Every prophet is all supposed to be agreeing with the other prophets. And ultimately, all prophets are supposed to agree with Moses. They are not a real prophet if they disagree with Moses. Going on, you can show a Christian verbatim. Jesus of Nazareth is a man. Now, it literally says it just like that. Now, you know what the Christian going to say? They going to say, no, he's not. He's not a man. Let me tell you, they twist the scriptures. They actually believe they can write scripture because if you are not going by the scripture and you making up your own scripture, such as Jesus is God, then you feel entitled. You feel like you can write whatever you want. You can say whatever you want, because in Christianity, there are no boundaries. OK, now I'm just telling the truth. I'm just telling the truth. Now, the early church did miracles. Jesus did miracles. They all believed in divine healing. The church of today is going to the doctor. The church of today is making appointments, okay? And bless their hearts, okay? Some of these Christians actually feel like they can do the same miracles as Jesus and his disciples, okay? That's why they faking miracles in these churches. Now, why am I exposing the church? Because the Bible says we ought to reprove and we ought to show the light and expose the darkness. OK, we're not supposed to just sweep everything under the rug. We must deal with the elephant in the room and the elephant in the room is the Christian church. Now, think about it. Christians believe that their religion is the perfect religion and all other religions is nothing. OK, if that's true, how come there's no answer to prayer? How come there's no healings? How come there's no miracles? How come there's no prophecy? There's about 450,000 denominations in Christianity. Y'all all disagree. So what power does the church of today have that the church of yesterday had? Nothing. The church you read about in the Bible is nothing like the church we see today. Some of these Christians are actually catching charges. We just had one pastor 
have his wife commit suicide or whatever it is, okay? Why is the church pastor's wife is committing suicide? Why is these bishops, such as Bishop uh, Whitehead, why is he defrauding his congregation? He's on his way to prison. Why? Stealing their money to add to his clothing collection, to add to his shoe collection, to add to his car collection. The church of today is a joke. Now, we know that all religions have issues, okay? I'm not saying that we are exempt. But what I'm saying is the most authentic religion we have today is the nation of Islam. So like I told you, Christianity is, is Christ insanity. They are literally just doing whatever they want, saying whatever they want, preaching whatever they want. OK, nothing is in the scripture. Jesus is not God. That's not in the scripture. But the Christian is going to tell you that all day, all day, every day. Now, I want to deal with a scripture. This is going to be in the book of Matthew. Now, amazingly, in the book of Matthew, chapter seven, this rebuke is only for the Christians. OK, this is going to be in the book of Matthew, chapter seven, verse twenty one. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Now let's pause. Do the Buddhists call Jesus Lord? No. Do the Hindus call Jesus Lord? No. Do the atheists call Jesus Lord? No. Do the Muslims call Jesus Lord? No. There's only one religion on planet Earth today that calls Jesus Lord. And that is the Christians. So it's safe to say in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus is talking to the Christians. Now let's start again at the top. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Why did he add an extra Lord? Okay, it's a parable. I believe this is going into how Christians call Jesus God. Okay, he went from being a messenger. He went from being the Messiah to being God. And that wave wasn't in the beginning. When I first started coming to church about 20 years ago, you didn't hear the phrase Jesus is God, okay? You might have heard Jesus is Lord, okay? Jesus is master, but you didn't hear Jesus is God. That all came into being around the time that Jesus camp video came out. The phrase or the term Jesus is God just started circulating, okay? Because, like I told you, the Christians don't have to have any scripture to validate any of their claims. Now, when I say scripture, I'm talking about solid scripture. Because you can pull the before Abraham was I am, but that's a parable, okay? You can bring out I and my father is one, but Jesus said we all are one. OK, you can bring out these parables, but they're not solid. The solid scriptures we have about Jesus being a human being is found in Acts 2.22, where Peter tells us a man of his equal, a man that was his follower, a man that was with him in his darkest moments. Peter, a man who literally grabbed Jesus and snatched him up and rebuked him and told him, that he was not about to suffer. Okay. This man tells us. And he gives us the perfect balance. He tells us Jesus of Nazareth. Was a man. Okay. He tells us plainly. He tells us the truth. Okay. So when I say the Christians have no solid scripture. I'm just being truthful. All they have is dark shades. Allegories. Uh, dark sentences. Parables. They don't have anything verbatim where Jesus is telling you he is God. Now, they love to pull that one with Thomas. When Thomas says, my Lord, my God, that scripture is not clear as into who he was directly speaking to when he said, my God. He might have said, my Lord, speaking to Jesus, and he might have said, my God, speaking of God in heaven. That scripture is not clear, especially when you are in the same chapter, John chapter 20, and Jesus tells Mary, 
I go to my father and your father, which is a metaphor. And then he says, I go to my God and your God. So it is not possible for a God to have a God. Jesus is not a God. God tells us in the book of Isaiah, I am God and there's no God beside me. I know not one from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. There is only one God. He tells us in the book of Isaiah that he will not share his glory with no one. Okay, so we know there is no solid scripture of Jesus being God. You simply have to do what the Christians love doing, walking the fields with their little uh, metal detectors and saying, oh, oh, I found a little nugget. I found something. No, that is not real gold. It's fake. It's fraudulent. It's like a check that's about to bounce. Okay, those scriptures are not clear. We know for a fact God doesn't get hungry, according to the Bible. God doesn't sleep, according to the Bible. Jesus did all the above. He defecated, okay? He drank water, okay? He was a human being. He was born of a woman. He was unclean for 40 days, okay? They had to offer the, the sacrifice, according to the law of Moses, okay? Jesus slept. He did all the above. He was a human being. OK, and we know what happens today. Watch crime daily or watch 48 hours. Every time someone dies, what do we do as human beings? We put a lot of extra cream on a taco. Oh, that person was such an angel. And oh, this person was the most loyal person. And oh, very seldom do you see someone simply say, hey, that was my girl. You know what? She was a beep. You know what I mean? But I love her. Most of the time, when someone passes away, there is a huge fabricated story about them. And it's the same thing with the prophet Isa. Much accolades was given to him, okay? A lot of extra sauce, a lot of extra cream is involved in the book of John, especially in John chapter 1, okay? Especially in the last book where he says there's not enough room on earth. To fit all the books. Now we know this is all fabrication. Okay. This is one man who fell in love with the story of Jesus. And he fabricated. But keep in mind. Everything Jesus said was in a parable. That is seen in Matthew 13, 34. Now Christians you have no right to sit up there and say. Well you know he mainly spoke in parables. That's not in the Bible. That's not in there. It says everything he said. He spoke in parables and there was not one thing he said to them without using a parable. You don't have the right. I told you to make scriptures. OK, according to the Bible, Jesus spoke in parables. So now with all this, we've gathered from all the other religions. There's only one religion that called Jesus Lord. They call him God. OK, he went from being the Messiah OK, the rabbi to being God. That's just how people are. This is the reason why God gave the children of Israel a certain amount of days to mourn whenever someone leaves the scene. So let's get back to Matthew 7 and 21. I won't be with you long today. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never, not one time, I never knew you depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. See, this is a parable. He's trying to let you know everything that's going on in Christianity. He has no part in it. Now, y'all call Jesus the sacrifice for sins, although he's disqualified because he was bruised. OK, you can't offer a lamb that's been bruised and severely beaten. According to the Christians, Jesus was beat unrecognizable. How is he going to be? A sacrifice, amazingly. But going back to the sacrifice Christians claim him to be. 
He's supposed to be the sacrifice for all sins. So why is he making a big deal about these people lying in his name? Why don't he just forgive them? How come, according to Revelations 1 and 7, I always add an S, you know, it's by habit, but it is the book of Revelation 1 and 7, there's going to be weeping and crying. Why isn't it singing and victory? Why? Because there's a huge lie going on in Christianity, okay? And there's going to be mourning because God is going to make it the mourning as a only son. Why? Because Jesus will be a picture of the firstborn of Egypt whom Allah will cause to die a natural death. Now, Jesus had a supernatural birth, okay? In other words, that's a metaphor into how everybody thinks and believes he's God. But he's going to have a natural death that's going into how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or you may call him God Almighty, is going to have the last laugh and everybody is going to see that he is God with no partners. In other words, we all going to see Jesus as he really is, just a plain human being whom Allah had mercy on, okay, and allowed him to be the Messiah, allow him to be the one to clean up this mess that Paul made in Christianity. So we see that there is a killing of the firstborn that's going to take place, okay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved Jesus, okay? He divinely rescued him from death. But there's coming a day when Allah will cause him to die just to prove to the world that Jesus is not God. So the killing of the firstborn and him saving the children of Israel from Egypt, okay, causing the Red Sea to swallow up Pharaoh and all that, that's going into the defeat of the Christian church. But that's also a picture of what's going to happen in the last day. God is going to get all the glory just like he got in the days of Egypt when he destroyed Pharaoh. Pharaoh was a man that claimed to be God. So it was such a huge defeat when God destroyed Pharaoh, okay? Because Pharaoh believed that he was God. This is the reason why he told Moses, who is the Lord? You know, like, who is he? Because in his own mind, Pharaoh believed that he was God. And Pharaoh ain't nothing but a picture of Paul, okay? In the Christian church, God is going to destroy Pharaoh. He's going to destroy the Egyptians. You get that? He's going to destroy the Egyptians. In other words, the Christians. He's going to destroy that church. And when he causes Jesus to die a natural death, he's going to get all the glory, just like he did in the past. There's nothing new under the sun. History simply repeats itself over and over and over. The exodus, it's on its way. That exodus that took place, in the past, is going to happen again. This is when God is going to rescue the people of Palestine. Oh, yes, he is. Allah's help is near. He's going to rescue them. We know that it's soon because right now they're digging their children out from in between the bricks of mortar. Just like the real Israelites in the day when Pharaoh, the new Pharaoh, was killing their children, speaking of the Israelites, okay? God's help was on the way because the children of Israel began to moan and groan and God heard their cry. Right now, the people of Palestine are being oppressed and God is hearing their moaning and their groaning. He's seeing all those babies being killed. He sees them right now in between the piles of rocks and his help is on the way. Now, nobody knows the day or the hour, okay? Not Jesus, not Muhammad, no one, okay? But according to the Bible, if you use wisdom, you can see from the Solomon concept, there's nothing new under the sun. So let's conclude with this. When Jesus said, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, that right there, my brother, was a strong word for the church only. That word was for the Christians. You know why? Because the Christians 
are the only ones who are insane enough to call Jesus God. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth.